Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and praise God tonight. We're in for a treat. Come on and give him praise. He's awesome. He's mighty. He's powerful. And he's here. He is here, guys. I have, I have one announcement, and that's children's deliverance. We're excited for children's deliverance tomorrow. Uh, we're kicking it off our first, first of the year. Uh, we do children's deliverance every year during the summer for your babies. So if you want to bring them out or if you know anybody you want to bring out, um, it's for preteens. They're testing Mike's mics. Mike's mic. <laughs> um, they're uh, preteens, so it's ages, uh, babies, toddlers to 12. And, um, you know, it, you want to come out and support, you're more than welcome. Help us pray and intercede for the children. So it's really awesome because kids don't, kids really don't have like a resistance to deliverance. You just tell them, hey, you have a demon. Okay, get them out. <laughs> they tell you get them out <laughs> you know did you know you have a fierce spirit well get them out you know let's do it okay it's awesome so um tomorrow at 10 we'll be here and uh i just have i have a powerful testimony um for myself this weekend i had um some meetings that i had set up with some family members some outside work that i'm doing and uh it's my cousin and her ex-husband uh, believe it or not, they get along. <laughs> but uh, we prayed him into the into the body of Christ for many years. We were praying for this man. They ended up getting divorced, but he finally got delivered. And one thing I want to share with you guys, and, and, and I know if you've been around for a while, Brother Mike, when he, and I never knew this, but when you minister to people to forgive, you also have to release people. So um, when we pray for you, you release people when you forgive them, get them out of your soul so God can move on, on, on their behalf. That's why a lot of moms don't see their children uh, into the kingdom when they want them so bad. They want them to come in. Lord, I've been praying for my child to get saved for so many years, but I haven't seen it yet. Be patient and release them to God because this man was a hardcore. All of us were hardcore sinners. I, I was a hardcore sinner, but this good, he didn't care. He, um, he was, he, he just didn't really, you know, he treated his, my cousin real bad, but anyways, but that's his past, right? So him and, uh, my cousin and her son both released him from their souls. Two months later, guys, this man got saved two months later, four months later, he came to the deliverance center, got some deliverance. Okay. I got to pray for this man yesterday and I used something that brother Mike uses and I love this because I'd never used it before, but he'll pray for people, which is true. God wants to heal us, right? He loves us so much. He wants to heal us. He wants to save us. He wants to deliver us. So I, I, I let him know. I said, God wants to heal you because he has a really bad back, deteriorating bones in his back. I said, God wants to heal your back, brother Mario. So I prayed for him. And sure as I'm talking to you right now, his, his back was healed. It was totally, completely healed. He goes, I can't even tell you the last time I was able to sit up. I, can't, I used to roll out of bed. But he demonstrated how he would get out of bed and he was able to you know, sit up. I can't tell you the last time he told me. He was crying, just tears, just tears coming out of his eyes. I can't tell you the last time I've been able to do this. I can't tell you the last time I did that. So God is faithful. Um, he also healed my cousin because her back was uh, messed up and uh, prayed for my sister who doesn't even really go to church. She believes in Jesus. But I said, I want to pray for you. Let's let's go ahead and, and let God heal your back because her back was crooked. And she goes, oh, my God, what is this? <laughs> my leg is shaking. Oh, this is weird. <laughs> But he healed her. It was awesome. So I just want to praise God for that. Give that testimony. And, and I hope that God will move on your behalf too. So, and just without further ado, Brother Mike.
There it is. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right. Who in this uh, section right here has a bad back? Okay. Come on up here. How about in this section? Anybody here got a bad back? She just walked out. Who walked out? Maribel. Maribel. Hey. Hey, can you go out and get Maribel? I can go. I don't know if my back's bad or old. <laughs> What's wrong with it? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> it's bad. Anybody here got a bad back? Who's got a bad back? You got one? What happened to your back? Work. Yeah, what lower work or idea. upper? Work. What? Uh, work, same thing. Yeah. Work, lower or upper? Middle. Middle. Oh, you're saying middle back. Yeah. Right in this area? Right here. That's yeah. exactly where. Where, right in this area? I got it up in here. Just look right there. Shoulder blades. Right yeah, there. Like up in there. You got it from lower back. Lower How'd back. you hurt yours? You ate too much. You eat too much? <laughs> yep. Yeah, sit down over there. We'll pray for you last. Anybody else? Where's that girl that was here with the bad back? Marianne. That girl. Oh, he went to get her? Okay, how'd you hurt your back? I have bulging discs. Oh, you got bulging discs? Yeah. Okay. And there's low back? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. It's better though since I've been getting deliverance. Now, uh, some illnesses are related to physical injuries, trauma. Others are, are demons causing illnesses in the body. Correct? Right. And we, we have a whole... I wrote a little book on it in their atonement healing where I bifurcated the demonic illnesses and the non-demonic illnesses, right? So the demonic ones you need deliverance on and the uh, medical ones you need healing. Correct? And that's how Jesus did it. I'm just following what I read. That's all I ever do is follow what I read. Then I make stuff up along the way. <clears throat> Right? Um, okay. What's your name, sir? And Robert James. All right. Stand up here, Robert. Now, just, just close your eyes for a second, sir. And uh, just think for a second. Is there anything that uh, you're doing, you know God doesn't approve of it? Uh, just don't. I'm don't sure of it, yeah. What'd you say? Yeah, I'm sure of it. You know what it is? Um, I just not do well, a lot of the time, like things I feel like I should do that I don't do. Uh, some would say maybe looking at the women because they're very pretty sometimes, maybe, you know, just are beautiful. I don't know, something to say about that. I just look at them because they're pretty and stuff. They're nice looking. Okay. Would you be willing to? Turn that over to the Lord and repent of that tonight. That's a oh, yeah. common sin almost 100% of Christians have. Yeah. He, he's not a bad person. Yeah. Are you? Try not to be. And you want to serve the Lord, don't you? Yeah. All right. So right now, in the name of Jesus, you're going to just repent. Repent, oh Jesus. Sorry that I was deliberately committing sins of omission. And uh, I've been doing things I shouldn't do, and I apologize to you for it. All right. Tell me. You ready? Uh, yeah, I All got right, closure. I got you, you got what in your ears? I got tendonitis. How long you had that? Huh? How long have you had the tendonitis? About 10 years. What triggered that? Uh, I was in the basement, and we were taking out lockers underneath the uh, place. And Alejandro, bam, I, hit, I was there. And when I came out, my ears were just ringing from the, the smack into the hammers and taking them out. It was a work-related injury? Yeah. It was, uh, Did you file a worker's comp claim? Nah, because the place I was at, I couldn't do it. Okay. Now just take a big breath and relax, sir. Just close your eyes there. Okay. Now, it's this area right in here, right? Yeah, there. My, I got my neck. I got, well, that's a right in my neck and my lower back. Are you sure you repented? I repent, Lord. 
pretty much stands and things like that. I've done a lot of those things. I can't probably remember a lot of things. Or stand up the things I can't remember. Things I don't All right. remember, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're a very loved person, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Take a big breath and let's go ahead and receive your healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She can't heal anybody. I certainly can't. <laughs> oh, my God, if I could heal somebody, I wouldn't be having all these surgeries. Only the Holy Ghost can heal. No one else, right? He heals through the broken body of Jesus. Yes. That's how he does it. Yes. It's not magic. It's divine power. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing, I'm doing, Thank you, Jesus. Right now, I'm doing things for taking like, hep C yeah. medicine. It's terrible. Like, hep C, you got hepatitis C, too? I'm taking the okay. medicine. It's no, that's, that's a separate issue. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Now, check. Check your back and see if there's any change. Is it worse, better, or the same? It's better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Check your ears out. Okay. See, I got my ears are bad. They get really bad. My right side. I got you cut in there. Cuts voices and stuff, and certain tones of voices. And that's made it really bad. Like you know. I love hearing music, but like I can't go into a place where there's loud music, you know. And I love praying and worship so much, but I can't enjoy it because a lot of the people's voices are like, oh, I'm just listening to the spirit movies. You want to go high with the voices and so. Now, can you hear me right now? Yeah, I hear, I hear good. I hear real good. Okay, how, how are you going to check it? Basically, it's kind of hard in the room, but it gives when it gets real quiet. You can hear it. Then, uh, when it gets quiet, what? When it gets quiet, then I can hear it. But it don't bother me. It's just when it gets real high, a certain high pitch, you know, and it's just like, uh, just you get around around you with the feeling, you know. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, will you come up to the altar later so we can do that other? What was the third thing you had? Taking medication for what? Hep C. Yeah, that's a different. Yeah. That's a different issue. Okay. All right, stand up here, sir. <laughs> Mid back. You hurt yours on the job too. Oh, back. Yeah, I did. What's that? Back. It's hurting now, or yeah, I get it. Just started hurting. Yeah, it just like hurt right now. But okay, that sounds like a spirit. Okay, that's a demon. Because that's a demon. This spirit, <clears throat> I, I've been having, and it'll travel through me. I can feel it. It's like it's weird when I get prayed for. Uh -huh. People pray for me, and I'll tell like get out and chase up, and it'll go down here, and it'll, and it'll go. Yeah, I can feel it go down my legs, and my legs will feel like I got Frankenstein legs. They're like, yeah, they feel like they just gained like twenty pounds. You know, yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, now that demon knows something he doesn't, so he's got a legal right to be in there. So all we got to do is figure that out and we can get him out of there. Yeah. All right. Do you, do you have anything you need to repent of, sir? I have a lot I need to repent of, but the worst okay. is that I've believed for so many years that, that I was too rotten and too awful for Jesus to save me. Were you here the night I taught about the law? Yes, sir, I was last week. And I've fought that, fought that for my whole adult life. Did you repent of it? I've repented, but I'm still not healed of it. Why? Because I'm still holding on to it. Why? Because I, I believe it. And I don't want to believe it anymore. I'm tired yeah. of it. Why don't you believe what God said? What is it about him you don't trust? I don't trust myself. You don't trust yourself? Does anybody? Not if they have half a brain, you're not trusting in yourself. You're trusting in God's mercy and grace, aren't you? I know it's true in my head, but I don't. I, I, I can't make it real in my heart. So you're you're condemning yourself. Yeah. For. How I've lived my life, what I've done, my choices. Your regrets is what you're saying. Yeah. So what what this guy's saying here is. He's a good guy and he has a humble heart, and that's what his real asset is. He doesn't believe in the blood of Christ. He doesn't think it's worth that much. Because he 
I just asked him if he asked for forgiveness. Once you're forgiven, the blood uh, removes the sin as if it never existed. The blood of Jesus. If he were under the law, which we taught last week, and had blood sacrifices, yeah, the guy would be in deep trouble because that never removed the sin. Goats and calves can't remove sins. The blood of Christ removes them forever. Yeah. So the biggest thing here apparently he needs to repent of is not believing the blood of, <laughs> blood of Jesus. <clears throat> because he's talking about his past and the devil keeps bringing up your past to you. And if you let him, that will ruin your future. That's why he brings up your past so he can trash your future. He's smarter than we are. Would you be willing to repent of that, sir? Go ahead. That sounded sincere. Did he forgive you? Well, then it doesn't exist anymore. Is that true? It's all gone. You, you didn't have a, a rotten past. That was all nailed to the cross. Everybody has a rotten past. I got thousands of things I would do over if I had a chance. But I just nailed him to the cross and moved forward, right? We do the Apostle Paul thing here, don't we? We forget those things which are behind us and we reach for those things that are before us. We reach for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Right? We want to be like Brother Paul and be found in him, not having our own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God through faith in Christ. That's what we're after, right? We're following him as he follows Christ, so to speak, as he worded at one time, right? Right? Did you do that, sir? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> I should do it then. Stand right there. Lord, your, your son forgave uh, himself. He repented of not believing that the blood of Jesus wipes out sins. That's the essence of Christianity, isn't it? I mean, Father, that's got to be the bullseye, the precious blood of Christ, the greatest spiritual commodity, so to speak, in the universe. The only thing that can save us is the blood that Jesus shed. When that covers our sins, our sins disappear. They don't exist anymore. I, was, I am no longer an adulterer. You're no longer an addict. Amen. You're no longer a slut. You're no longer an idiot. You're no longer a criminal. You're no longer a heathen. You're no longer an alcoholic. This isn't an AA meeting. You're not a recovering alcoholic. You get rid of the demons. You're an ex-alcoholic. Recovering alcoholics for NA. We don't do that in NA here. They're good people though. Thank you, Jesus. This guy repented. Amen. So he's check out your back. Move around. Worse, better, or same. It's better. You touched it and you're clean now. This guy's sinless. I love you. I can love you. <laughs> What's your story, ma'am? Um, what do you need to repent of? I need to repent of 
things I did in my past. How that's my children. How you what? The things I did in my past. I was I did you. Oh, I you hurt yoga. your kids. Well, no, I did yoga. I brought. I opened up a lot of spiritual doors. And they hurt your kids. Yes, my kids are suffering. They're, they're what? They're suffering because of it. Okay. Did you already ask for forgiveness for that? <laughs> um, I've been working on the last week. This is all You've been what? Working on it the last week. Oh, this okay, is no. new to me. <laughs> oh, we don't do that, ma'am. Raise your hands. Close your eyes there. We don't work on the blood of Jesus. It's It works instantaneously when the person repents. We know there's no working involved. It's all grace and mercy. That's right. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for what I've done to my kids, and I ask you to forgive me. I was wrong. I hurt them, and I hurt you. I'm asking you to wash me in the blood and forgive me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm asking you to forgive me. Any spirit I let into the to my home that attacked my children, I'll repent of it. <laughs> I'm asking you to forgive me. I love you, Lord. Thank you for your healing power. I know you're going to deliver my kids. When I listen to the seminar tonight. I'm sure you're going to deliver them. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that was a sincere prayer, wasn't it? You weren't fooling around there, were you? <laughs> Fantastic. To my kids. <laughs> no, of course not. How about you? Were you fooling around when it comes to you? I'm trying not to. Oh, here, go ahead and repent of it. Now. Here we go. <laughs> Dear Jesus, I'm sorry. I hold grudges against myself. That's self ought. That's a sin. And that blocks healing. Self ought blocks healing. Ask that guy in the church. Ought blocks your healing. Now repent of it right now. There is no ought. I have no sin. Ought is uh, bad feelings about yourself. Yeah, I put my guilt on Jesus, my shame, and I let it go today. I am washed in the blood, and I am sinless in the eyes of God. What other people think doesn't matter. Amen. How'd that go? Okay, where's the pain at again? Oh, uh, my upper. Up here? Yeah. Clear up to here? Yeah. How'd you hurt your neck? Oh, gosh. I don't know. How'd you hurt back? Uh, car, car accident. Yeah, car accident? Okay. Close your eyes, take a big breath, and relax there. Okay. Just receive your healing. Okay. Here we go. Oh, that's a spirit right there. It's feeling. Come on out of there. Lift out of that back right now. Come out of that back. Come out of there. Yeah, we got him. See, that's a demonic illness, not a physical one. Come out of there, devil. Right now, quickly. Out you go. Quickly. Come on out. Go. Not in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Get out of there. Go. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Come out in the name of Jesus. 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 Get out of there. Thank you, Father. Self hatred. Come out of there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Being hard on myself. I repent of it. Come out of there, devil. Come out in the name of Jesus. Right now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Blaming myself. Come on out. Get out. There he is. There he is. He's moving around. Go. Out you go. Go. Go now. All right, check out your neck there. Move your head around. Okay. 
Check out your back. What? Check out your upper back. <laughs> Check it out. Okay. Any change? Uh, yeah. Is it worse, better, or the same? It's better. It's better. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, amen. <laughs> All right, we we're canceling the seminar tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, sir, are you stand for the altar call. You? Yes. Okay, good. Um, that's a different situation. All right, let's uh, see if we can get through some of this. Uh, I can't. Then we'll switch it over to. Uh, Split it up and do the rat last half next week, next month, if that's okay. All right. Oh, the next seminar is is uh, in the end of June there, 28th. And uh, here's all the radio programs. There I'm on seven days a week here. You can catch all the radio programs on the website, 24 hours a day. Set another record last week on uh, seculardarkskyradio.com. I'm on there every night at 9 o'clock. I had 48,000 listeners, which was the most I've ever had. So it's it's creeping up there. I'm trying to get up, I'm trying to get to the secular people. I used to be a secular person. Anybody here shop at Amazon? Oh, we got some high rollers here. We'll just put in our charity name. Go to Smile Amazon, and they'll donate to our ministry 1.2% uh, of whatever you buy. Okay. So if you rich people go to Amazon, put that in, go to Smile Amazon, they'll donate money to us for free. Tonight's teachings on uh, House of Healing AZ, our YouTube teaching channel. Please uh, remember to get the miracle list from me for self-deliverance at home. I'll uh, send it right to you if you send me an email. <laughs> you can donate on the website, of course. Those are the three books I wrote, one on healing, one on curing mental illnesses, and the other one on the devil. Our Thursday night healing room is booming. Uh, I guess last night was our best service from what I've told. We may have to open the whole thing up here and move it into the main sanctuary now. Having so many people come. Lots of deliverances and healing. Brother Rick's killing it. And uh, our mental illness healing class is also at 7 o'clock. That's in the small sanctuaries. I mistyped that. I just, Sorry about that. I'm on uh, TalkAmericaRadio.us on June 20th. That's a nationwide broadcast. Looking forward to that. These are the Bible versions I recommend because they use the received text, and uh, they won't have verses out of your Bible, missing out of your Bible if you use these versions. The other versions all have different gaps because they're using different Greek texts. This is the best Bible I've ever seen. In terms of translation, translating from the Greek, the KJ3 Bible, I do sell it in the uh, bookstore. I use the King James Bible. I'm an older person, so I like some these and thous. Most people do not like these and thous. But I'm a fine one. I can read past them. These and thou. Like a foreign language. Pistis. When I left my secular counseling career, I had all kinds of questions of, for God. All kinds of things I did not understand. I came out of the Assembly of God religion. And the Assemblies of God religions is a pretty good church denomination. They're the largest Pentecostal denomination in the United States. And they uh, believe in, you know, the basics they do believe in moving in the spirit healing speaking in tongues deliverance is very hit and miss over there uh, mostly miss they're really weak on it but I ministered in the assemblies of God as a lay person and I had all kinds of questions about Christianity and how this whole system worked and why it didn't work why doesn't Christianity work very well? Uh, why does it break down so easy? Uh, 
we had people dying in our church that hundreds of people were praying for I never understood that uh, we had people backsliding all the time and never understood that um, one person would get healed then the next one wouldn't get healed then somebody else would get healed and then these people over here didn't get healed and it drove me nuts and I had all these all these oddities spiritual oddities going on I don't know if any of you have ever been in a church and wondered these things maybe it's just me but I would question God all the time not accusing him of stuff but saying I don't understand you know why is this person acting like that why are they saying that why did the Holy Spirit do that to that person oh look this person here seems to live a perfect holy life look at that guy over there he he lives like a heathen he got healed she didn't why does a person who appears to be a good person not healed and the some person who's a semi scumbag does get healed uh, I did some street ministry when I was there and a street a guy living on the street got healed right on the spot one night and I was like well, what in the world we got these people that have been in church for years and they're not healed and I go out with a couple other people and pray for a guy on the street and they're instantly healed so I had all these oddities floating around in my head Looks like I'm the only odd person here, but I had all kinds of other questions about mental illness and all that stuff. Well, God gave me all kinds of revelations, and this one is the biggest and the best I ever got. He answered my questions. Tonight, I'm going to share it with you. It's the best revelation and the biggest one I ever received from the Lord. <coughs> God defined and showed me what this word pistis means. It's the Greek word for faith. faith. Thank you. The Old Testament was the law, book of the law, the law of Moses. The New Testament is the law of faith. The law of faith has replaced the law of Moses. We are now under the law of faith. And it is a law, as you'll see in a minute. The problem was, God showed me right away, is the definition of terms. Why does Christianity seem so jacked up? It's because of a definition of terms. The word faith is defined differently than God defines it. This is the kind of the faith that we run on. Uh, Webster says it's to be persuaded something is true, right, accurate, or correct. That is not pistis. That's human faith. Okay? So you call me up, and I'll be over at 2 o'clock tomorrow to pick up that box. And I go, you know, what's your name? Rihanna. I know Rihanna, and uh, I have faith she'll be there tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Because I've had experiences with her and she seems reliable So I have faith she'll be there right okay, that is not pistis Because I know She may not show up What if she gets in a car accident? What if she has a heart attack? What if she gets married? Boom so my faith has room, as my grandpa used to say, wiggle room. See that? I have faith to show up. Faith, F-A-I-T-H in English. But there's some wiggle room there. She may not be there at 2 o'clock to pick that box up. Right? That's the kind of faith that people use with God's word and that's why Christianity doesn't work I never knew that until I got this revelation faith is an English noun noun translating the Greek word pistis correct it's a noun right 
everybody knows a noun is different from a verb of course <clears throat> Christianity and our churches base Christianity and he on faith not pistis pistis always works faith doesn't okay. you can vote for a politician and you have faith they'll get in there and do a good job and guess what happens they don't thank you sir I see you're familiar with how the system works <laughs> well I had faith in him well no human faith allows wiggle room see it's not I guess absolute faith it allows a margin of error pistis doesn't what does all this mean Mike well I'll get to it here in just a second pistis is a noun and it's defined as having zero doubt and zero unbelief with her I had some doubt I had car accident doubt I had maybe she got sick maybe uh, she had maybe she ate at Gagoberto's <laughs> the night before and woke up with Montezuma's blowout I had I had wiggle room in my faith in her correct because I knew there was a chance she wouldn't show. Not that it's her, going to be her fault. I'm not blaming her for anything. But I have some doubt. There's a possibility. There's some wiggle room. There's a chance she may not show up. That is not Bible faith. That's not pistis. Pistuo is the verb for pistis. Pistuo is an action verb word. Correct? Pistis is usually defined as uh, translated as faith. Pistuo is usually translated to believe. Faith noun believe verb. They're two different words, even though they're in the same family correct okay one is connected to the other you cannot pistuo believe if you do not have pistis faith you can have pistis faith and not believe a person can have faith but not step out on that faith. They have the option through free will yes, to do nothing Come on. and stand there with like a dork. <laughs> yeah, I used to be a dork, but I got cooled. I'm cool now. Yeah, who's with me? Who's following me? Pistus is boom. Pistuo is the action of pistus. It's faith in action. Pistus doesn't bring the miracle. Pistuo does. But Pistus is the foundation for the miracle. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. At the Assemblies of God church when I was in for so many years, I saw this thing playing out and didn't know what it was. I was frustrated, tired, confused. Why is this person saved for 20 years appear to have oodles of faith quoting the Bible by the yard and can't get out of the chair right, right. is anybody listening to me <clears throat> why does somebody who just got saved getting all these blessings is anybody I didn't understand it until later Romans 12 Every person who's born again, every single born again person, even a backslidden Christian, listen carefully, has what? Marizo, God divided the giant faith pie, pistis, 
and he gave a metron a portion where we get our English word meter to every born again believer. So when I had that man standing up here, I already knew he had faith. He came up here on his own volition. Right? I knew that guy wasn't a heathen, an atheist, a Muslim. I knew he wasn't. I see some of you are doubting that guy. I am not. Uh, yeah, the shirt's not that nice, but listen, this guy is a born again Christian. <laughs> You've got, well, we're praying for her now. Every Christian, don't ever say that a Christian doesn't have any pistis. That's a filthy lie. You may not be using your pistis. That's maybe a thousand percent true, and that is very common. In fact, it's 98% of Christians. They're not pistol using their pistis, but they still have it. You can have gifts and blessings and faith from God and not use them. Right. Right? Yes, yeah. This is all basically common sense. Now pistis Pistis is defined as what no No You don't have any of that Okay, when the green guy came up here you notice when I was talking to him and he was talking to me He was revealing that he had And we went over it Right he didn't want this. Right. Correct. He didn't want to have it. Notice that? That was his heart saying, I want God. I have this, but I don't want it. Yes, See? So that's how you can determine somebody has a good heart if they're failing, but they don't want to fail. Correct. The people that have rotten hearts are ones that say, Well, screw it. Mm -hmm. I ain't worry about it anymore. That's a Seared conscience Okay, most people are hard to work with this guy's easy to work with because he had a good heart Pistis is the Hypostasis what it's the foundation to the home uh, Everybody in Arizona has a foundation for the home. What's it made out of? concrete where I'm from originally in Kansas They don't have just a foundation they got a basement Because this time of year something drops out of the sky raining the fire of hell Everywhere they're called tornadoes, so we go down in the basement either way either way the house is built on the foundation pistis yes. Yes, yeah. It is the foundation of things you're hoping for and it is the evidence Ellen costs the proof of things not seen So Wigglesworth had pistis Wigglesworth got this but he got it in a different way. He couldn't even spell a Greek word and he had trouble with English words God reveals things to people differently. I got it through the Greek text. You might got it some other way It's just as valid. God doesn't use the same method on everybody, right? Everybody's different. I'm different. You're different, but it's all valid Wigglesworth got this and was an expert on it and they called him the Apostle of Pistis that was his nickname Right, so when Wigglesworth Went to pray for that girl that was up here He would have just walked up to her and said what's wrong with you? That was his typical approach very blunt See, I use a gentle loving sweet approach <laughs> Wiggles what's your problem you got I got a bad neck Gah, boom. They stand up their necks healed why 
Wigglesworth had the foundation of pistis. He knew that God's word was a hundred percent true and it could be relied on under any circumstances. When I had the green guy up here, he didn't have that foundation. He had doubts mixed in with his pistis. He had pistis because he came up here. But his pistis was ineffective, leaving him sick because he had mixed it with doubts. A little leaven leavens the whole grump lump. So if you mix Doubt and unbelief with pistis it kills the pistis The pistis doesn't kill the doubt right. Right. So Wigglesworth the proof he already had it the woman was going to be healed before he prayed for her. If your pistis has no and no unbelief, then it's a spiritual fact. It's all over. It's going to happen. Nothing can stop it. There's nothing the devil can do to stop it. It is the proof of things you have not seen. If you have pistis about something in your future, it's guaranteed to happen. Unless you mix it with doubt, then what you're believing for in your future will not come to pass. Why? You mixed in poison. See? You put a little drop of strychnine in your lemonade. <gasps> Holy crap. I'm not taking one sip of that or I'm dead one little strychnine beep, doubt ruins the whole lump So me back with the assemblies of God We're we're praying for somebody at the altar, you know, and here's how we do it at the assembly of God Come on up here and pray. Come on up and pray prayer warriors. The pastor says that come on up because they don't want to do it Come on up So grandma grandpa Billy and Jack head up to the front Then we surround them see like it's a bust Like the Phoenix PD We're around this person and we're all putting our hands on them See, and we're all calling on God Heal, oh Lord. We, everybody's talking a different uh, blabbing faith thing. And we would blab our faith on this sick person. Blab, heal, brother. Everybody at once. Boom. Then they went back to their seat sick. Why? Blabbing the word of faith doctrine is a lie. It doesn't work. Blabbing something doesn't work without pistis. Without. You can word of face something to your face falls off. It's useless We were blabbing away at be healed in the name of Jesus one guy quoting scripture by the yard boom, 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 boom. I mean the devil we thought we were killing the devil He was sitting there laughing at us Because he knows demons know whether you've got any of those two things they sense it and they know the Holy Ghost isn't going to do it. Demons believe God more than Christians do. They know He's real. They only fear one person the Spirit of the Lord. Because He is the pistuo of the Godhead, He gets things done. Pistuo is the rocket. Pistis is the the foundation it sits on, right? You can't have one without the other. If 
having faith is not good enough Faith has to be exercised to generate a miracle from God If the person's sick and they have contamination The miracle stops right there The demons know that and so they lie to you by telling you all kinds of false doctrines That ch other churches believe God doesn't heal anymore miracles disappear with the apostles uh, But these things don't happen anymore. We got the Bible. We don't need it. There's all kinds of, uh, of crocodile crap everywhere but it's all put out by demons because of this teaching people don't understand I didn't understand it and was frustrated for years You can see how frustrated I was can't you working with church people church people drive you to drink <laughs> yeah, I went back a couple times drinking Yes, sir Two things that drive you to drink, bad marriage and church people. <laughs> Without pistis, check it out, pistis, it is impossible to please God. What kind of pistis? Pistis is defined as having faith with no and no right. Without God faith, pistis, it is impossible to please God. We went over that last week. No man can ever be justified by the works of the law. Right. It's not possible. Pleasing God is only possible through faith. Amen. This is the law of faith, yep. not the law of works. The whole system changed at Calvary. He that comes to God must what have faith? No. Pistuo, you must believe. You must step out on your faith. Are you reading this correctly? Yes. Think, think about it here. Without faith, pistis noun, it is impossible to please God, because you must come to God. Verb, pistuo. You come. You do something, believing that He is a rewarder. Verb. Of those who what? Exotao. It means to aggressively pursue. Okay? Casual Christians don't get any miracles. Their lives never get healed. Their bodies don't get healed. Their kids never get saved. Nothing ever happens. Why? Doubt and unbelief has caused them to lose their zeal. Zatao is the Greek word where we get our English word zeal to have zeal for something see it's a Tony Robbins syndrome Pow! <laughs> See he's got zeal see he's selling books and uh, Sexually harassing women. He's very <laughs> zealous about it. He's zealous about it. Come on honey drop your drawers buy a book first See you sell your books then you drop it Is anybody listen yes. this is God's word and this this is not me. It's impossible to please God through works It can only be done through pistis Believing with no doubts and no unbelief that I will reward you if you diligently aggressively pursue me Hallelujah. James 2 pistis if it does not have works is dead bingo Pistis alone doesn't work you got to add pistuo faith is created to be used Wigglesworth was using punk see that he was using pistuo he had pistis then he went punk that's pistuo Woman's neck healed They brought in the guy dying of cancer remember he's laying on the cot the wife's yelling Be careful with him. He's about to die. Don't hurt him Wigglesworth either didn't hear or didn't care Went like this 
punches the guy in the gut the wife screams ah, you killed him you killed him they roared him out of this auditorium ambulance heading to the hospital guy sits up what's up pistis the guy's dying of cancer he'll be dead in five minutes piss Come on. is anybody catching this if you can catch this teaching and I'm gonna warn you most people do not if you can catch this we will hear from you in Maricopa County soon you will become a very famous person people will flock to your dope you will go from being a Mickey Mouse church attending Christian to a disciple of God people will run to disciples of God carnal Christians will run to entertainers and get their fannies padded and their heart <laughs> that ain't Christianity that's mega church crap that's trash a disciple with the anointing of the Holy Ghost who has pissed us with what no no people flock there and get real needs met not entertainment needs met over at the mega church this is nasty preaching but it works it doesn't work long I mean I leave here quickly at night <laughs> Test us alone without you stepping out on faith is what? Dead. <laughs> Dead. Oh, this is good teaching. Pistis and pistuo without this is the bullseye of your future and your ministry. Only a small percent of people understand what I'm teaching tonight. That's where there's so few people running around. With the Holy Ghost anointing their ministry 98% of Christians just sitting there looking around 2% of them are actually out doing something for God. Hello. Hello That's the bullseye Pestis. no doubt and no unbelief and then step out on it You can't lose Now the Bible the Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. He used humans to do it. Okay. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord actually wrote it through the people. Okay. So he's the boss. And he painstakingly went over this concept to pound it into our thick skulls. And this is what he did. <clears throat> when I discovered this information, I like to die. Have the faith of God is the definition of. The Spirit of the Lord gave to Pistis. Mark chapter 11. Master, behold the fig tree you cursed yesterday. It's withered away. Jesus said, have faith in God. That's the King James Version. It was mistranslated. It was actually theu, which means have the faith of God. Yahweh is sitting on his throne tonight being worshipped by whatever's going on up there. I have no idea. I've never been there. He's not standing here listening to me hold a seminar. You know. <laughs> but Yahweh, when he says something, he has zero doubt and zero unbelief. God never doubts anything he says. When he speaks something, that's it. Eternity receives it as he spoke it. Am I right? God does not Sit on his throne up there, wishy washy. Hmm, I don't know what. To, are you sure? Maybe I need some advice. Can I get some counseling from Mike Smith? Not likely. No doubt and no unbelief is what? God faith. God faith is what? Piss this. Master, look what you did to the fig tree. Well, Jesus was exercising his pistis and then he pistuo the fig tree. There's no fruit on this fig tree, you piece of crap. Die! That's pistuo. Die! Hello. Amen. See him? Jesus had the pistis for the fig tree. Okay? He goes over there like I went over to her. He says, I believe there's uh, figs on this tree. 
He looks through the tree. There's no figs It's supposed to have figs that time of season This fig tree is your typical born-again Christian a screw up The tree is supposed to be coughing up fruit and typical Christians sit there and produce no spiritual fruit He looks at the tree. There's no fruit there. So Jesus Pistuos the tree am I helping anybody? Yeah. I'm using strange terms, but they're not strange terms. He goes die And he did it in front of the disciples why? Yes to teach This subject But he was illustrating it which is the best form of teaching Whoever shall say to this mountain be removed in the cast in the sea and what? Uh oh, uh oh, word of faith crap. <laughs> word of faith. <laughs> word of faith summarized spiritually. <laughs> oh, brother Mike, you're deep. This is a scholarly presentation. <laughs> word of faith sucks. Word of faith. Word of faith. <laughs> word of faith. <laughs> Why? You can blab anything you want, but if you have. What? Yeah. Doubt that is not pistis and it's damaged, polluted pistulo. You're just stepping out on faith, hoping it works. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I've done it before. I know. Yes, I made a fool out of myself. I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> See, just doing something, hoping it works, is a word of faith crap that doesn't bring a healing. The, the demons and the Holy Ghost know in your heart whether you truly believe. And they know if there's doubt in there. They know if there's unbelief in there. So you can't just blab something like these insane prophetic prophets. Have you ever heard any of these kooks that go around they give you here? I'm Apostle Bob and I'm prof prof prophetess uh, Wakinka. Oh Prophetess Wakinka. I need to see her. God has showed me that you're gonna <laughs> This crap has invaded the church and it's killing Christians these fake apostles and prophetesses these people are garbage yeah, that's right. We're deleting this out of YouTube <laughs> If you have pistis true pistis There's no doubt or unbelief. You don't have to hype something. You don't have to give them a sales pitch You don't have to Tony Robbins some gal. You just speak the word only And it happens Is somebody listening to me? The demons know whether you've got some doubt in there and they'll call you on it Ooh, they'll make a dad blame fool out of you. I know they've done it to me. See, when I was in the assembly of God thing, I had the word of faith thing in here. I had to get exercise that out because I used to do stuff and just take a shot at it. Yeah, I would do it. I would. I, I looked at the story in the Bible. I didn't really get it like this, but I thought, well, I'll try that. Whack. Why'd you hit me? <laughs> oh boy, my ministry sucks. <laughs> Listen, if pistis and faith is no doubts and no unbelief. Pistuo is stepping out on pistis, not on hopes and dreams. Hello. Cast into the sea, mountain. Fig tree, go in and see. Hmm. Oh, you hear that? I just went, hmm. That's a red flag. I had a little doubt in there. I said, a hmm. Hmms are good red flags. But, you ever heard that one? But. Oh, but is a killer. But reveals. Doubt. What is diacrino? Doubt. It's wondering, trying to decide between two things. 
<laughs> Look at these Costco tissues. I get these at Costco. You buy them in big boxes. <laughs> I'm not. Do you like blue or gray? See, I'm not sure which one. I like blue. I like. You like blue. Uh, <laughs> here's gray, blue. Uh, which one's better? I'm not sure. When I think about. Uh, let's see. Which one looks better? I'm not. Shall I put it over? Shall I put it on there? What am I doing? What am I doing right now? What am I doing? I, I am. Yeah. Crino. I'm fluctuating between two options. See, faith has no fluctuation. It's rock solid. Period. And shall not do what? Fluctuate between two subjects. Amen. That's good. I'm by faith. I'm blabbing out. I'm getting a job this week. Yes, sir. The devil comes along. Wait a minute. What if the guy's on vacation? Hmm. Now he's got me going. Uh -huh. No job now. I'm screwed. Why? I allowed the demons to put in. Diacrino. I'm vacillating now. As soon as you vacillate, to use a to use a religious term, you is screwed. <laughs> Is anybody now starting to realize why I was struggling with somebody God these people weren't healed these people were what's going on here you see why I had all these questions I got the answers now let's go Jesus said but shall what believe pistuo step out on your faith you see this verse has been misinterpreted Continuously in our Christianity, people are always quoting this verse. They have no idea what it means. They're just blabbing it out. It's a word of faith crap. No, this verse is very revealing. You can move mountains for God, no question. But the conditions are what? No vacillating, and you must step out on your. Pistis, which is natural for a person who has no doubts and no unbelief. It's natural for Wigglesworth. There you go, your cancer is healed. See? What am I not doing to get this point across? Maybe I need to maybe act it out, act like a fool. I'll do anything I have to do to get you to see this. Just speaking it doesn't do anything unless you've got no doubts and no unbelief and you speak it out. Then it has to happen. Because saying it is pistuo. You're speaking it out. Jesus, just speak the word only, and my son will be healed. The centurion took off and went home without even another thought. What was he doing there? The, the centurion showed up with pure pistis without doubt and unbelief. He then came to Jesus, pistuo. He was acting out his faith. And Jesus told him, he's healed. No problem. He turns around and leaves. What a great story. Illustrating what? Pistis and pistuo, doubt and unbelief. These are the key elements in your Christian life. Jesus said, whatever you desire, when you pray, what? Believe. Pistuo. Step out on your faith. Okay. And you'll receive them. Now here's the killer. Iteo is the Greek word for desire there. And it was kind of mistranslated. It means 
to ask somebody for something that they already said they would give you you already know it's yours okay. hey dad uh, can I have the keys tonight going out on a hot date dad goes yes if you get the lawn done I'll give you the keys and have the car he goes home and does the lawn I tail he then comes to dad says lawn's done give me the keys you see that whatsoever things you desire you're asking for something you've already been promised and you were told you could have so your pistis causes your pistuo give me the key <laughs> right. Right. That's good. That's good, are you seeing these are the deep things of God if you can possibly grasp this we will be getting your autographs in a few months. Yeah. <laughs> if not, you will be sitting in a megachurch somewhere watching a laser show and singing, ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Who cares? Whatever things you ask for because you already told you could have them. And you step out on your faith, pistuo, and you believe it's yours. You name it. There's the fig tree. That's the one that got torched. You can move mountains with pistis because you have no and no. What is pesticide? Well, it's a pistis killer. It's a chemical you use to murder, slaughter, kill, coffinize, destroy, pistis. How do you pisticide? Piss. It's caused by apostia. Unbelief. Unbelief. There it is. If you spray that chemical, wherever you're spraying it, stuff is going to die. Right there. That guy's killing stuff. He's a cold-blooded killer and so is unbelief Unbelief is a cold-blooded killer And so is this clicker There it is There it isn't all right What is apostia? What oh come on man you got to be kidding. But, huh? What? Really? <laughs> I missed that one, darn it. <laughs> Here's what I had the green guy here talking about his sins. What was he doing there? He had unbelief in what God says is true. If God tells you something and you even question it for a minute your miracles just disappear oh. gone <coughs> Pistis is believing God just because he's the one that said it if you tell me something I confess to you I don't have <laughs> Pistis. why I don't know you you could be some jacked up imbecile. You could be the straightest arrow in the planet Earth. If I don't know you, I don't have pistis for you. I can't trust what you're saying because you and I have not developed a relationship that I can trust. Correct? Well, a newborn Christian has unbelief, and that's perfectly natural and normal. But you, 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 you've been saved for 10, 20, 30 years. You don't have any excuse. So if you doubt God, you can kiss every prayer request goodbye. Because you know better. You weren't saved two days ago.
doubting is a pistis killer. It's pesticide. Pure pistis has nothing in it. See that? It's pure. If you have pistis, and you can have it, everybody, every born again Christian has it. God gave it to you when you got born again. If you mix in unbelief, doubt, questions, huh, what it wipes out your pistis, then wipes out your prayer request. So me in the assembly of God for years struggling helping people not seeing this I'm confused Then the demons came to me and told me hey the Bible doesn't really work You know it doesn't work. You spoke to that guy didn't you? The demons will quote scripture to you They know it better than you do <clears throat> So the devils come along and say well they start putting doubts in God's word which is their ultimate goal to wipe out your Christian life as soon as you God tells you something you start to go, huh? Right. Boom, you're done Jesus said everything father has is mine because I always do those things that please him what was pleasing him the most without Pistis it is impossible to please God Jesus believed everything father said to him just like that Without an explanation and having no proof of anything to back it up just because he said it You believe God just because of who he is If you don't have a good relationship with God, you're going to have doubts. You're going to have unbelief The system's going to crash We need a pistis reboot which is the purpose of this seminar tonight? See, yeah, throwing in that technical stuff. Yeah, that's to keep the YouTube people coming. Yeah. <laughs> Got to keep the technical. Mark Matthew seventeen. The disciples, disciples came to Jesus apart from me. They they went aside. Okay, that's what preachers do. They don't discuss stuff among you peons. We discuss things in private. We're gonna discuss among you guys. You guys are out. They come to Jesus in private. Why couldn't we cast a demon out of that boy? Deaf and dumb spirit. Kid had autism and everything else. Jesus said, Well, we ran into some super power demons on steroids and they kicked our butts. No, that's not what he said. Not, not likely. What was the root problem of that deliverance? Bingo. Apostia. The disciples started to go, wait a minute. Because the Bible says the scribes were in on the deliverance. And they were arguing about it, it says. See? As soon as you start arguing about things of faith, that generates doubt in faith. And it causes the word of God to collapse. And it causes your prayers to disappear. Yes. Arguing over things of faith is asinine. Yes. It generates two things. The disciples are listening to the scribes and said, well, well, hold on a minute. We put Bibles on their faces. Uh, we pour oil on them. We spray them with water. <laughs> we do this. No, we haven't been doing that. We've been speaking it out. And I saw Jesus just speak it out. No, and they were disputing it. It says Jesus came down the mountain. He said, what are you guys fighting about? What's going on over there? Is anybody getting this that deliverance fell into the world of Satan Unbelief they couldn't get the demons out Jesus said your unbelief ruined the deliverance Did you hear that wasn't the demon? Hello? I truly say to you, if you have pistis, oh my goodness, this statement is off the hook. If you have pistis the size of a grain of mustard seed, this verse is constantly misinterpreted by church people. And I misinterpreted it, and it made me mad. This verse pissed me off years ago. 
because I had a mustard seed of faith. I had it. This is stupid. I just prayed for that person and were healed. I know I've got a mustard seed. So I didn't understand that's not what it meant. The verse means that pistis without and without in even a tiny dose can move mountains and is unstoppable. Pure pistis can't be stopped. It's so powerful. It's like nitroglycerin. It goes off. And if you only got that much of it, you're in line for miracles from God. But it has to be pure. I had a mustard seed of faith. I had more than that at the Assemblies of God religion. But I also had mixed in. Ah, yes. I had doubts and I had unbelief. And it led to frustration and the demons would tell me hey the word of God doesn't work You're you interpreted that right see if you misinterpret the scriptures the demon will reinforcement that you are actually correct They'll actually come by and tell you. Oh, you're doing a great job. That's exactly what that verse means You're right brother Mike. Oh God, buddy. Oh, jeez. You're getting screwed by God Mike <laughs> Oh, buddy You're getting hosed Oh, this Holy Spirit stuff doesn't work Mike You prayed for him didn't you? Idiot. Yeah, I did. Well, they weren't healed, were they? You moron. You know, the demons always give you some facts and then they call you a name. <laughs> and then you're so stupid, you repeat the name. <laughs> you're right, I am a jackass. Oh, God, what an idiot. I'm, I'm a moron. Pretty soon now you're trashing yourself. True. You know, Mike, why do you teach like this? Because this is how people are. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> Listen. The devil said to me, Mike, that's what the verse said. Read it. You know, the demons love the King James Bible. They like all the Bibles. They can quote from every one of them. Look, it just says a mustard seed. You got more than that. Look what you did for God this week. You counseled this guy. You, you donated this amount of money. You tithed that. You gave this. You went and picked that person up. You went down the street. You did the men's meeting. You did, but I had all my Christian works all lined up, and the demons were reminding me of them. <laughs> They're going, Mike, baby, you're kicking it. <laughs> you got way more than a mustard seed of faith that proves that verse doesn't work. Oh my god They were lying to me up one side and down the other. I Didn't have pure Uncontaminated pistis. I had doubts Mixed in with my pistis as you just heard me enumerate. I just went through the list of doubts. I had as soon as you start doubting yourself and doubting God and you see yourself as a jackass and God is a failure your miracles trust me friend they're on the other side of the universe you will never find them never at least I'm helping the YouTube people now listen nothing is impossible to you what the devil got me on that one. He would quote that verse to me. That's not true, is it, Mike? You moron. You just pray. It didn't happen. I mean, you're not asking for God to move a mountain for you, are you? You just wanted that person's foot healed. What's the problem, Mike? Oh, I know what it is. God's a screw up, and you're screw up B. No, I wasn't seeing the text properly interpreted. Brother Mike was misinterpreting the text as almost all Christians do. Nothing is impossible to you if you have pissed us, even if it's that small, with no and no mixed in, is what he's saying. <clears throat> then he throws in something spectacular. He says this kind goes out, but by prayer and fasting What do you mean kind? Ganea means generational Some of these powerful demons that come down through the family tree and hit people and give them severe illnesses these are generational spirits and You have to be absolutely sure this is gone and that's gone before you face that monster
Have you ever considered that you Eric. might be saying that, that this kind is the kind that, is, that has doubt and unbelief rather than the size of the, the demon? Because That's what he meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, this has to be completely gone. He's not talking about the demon there. He's talking about this. Right. So it's not the size of the demon. Uh -uh. Or the demon it's the doubt and the unbelief. Doubt. Right. So when Jesus came to the boy, he had zero doubts and zero unbelief. Amen. So the demon was in trouble. Even though it was a superpowered spirit. Generational demons. That was a that was a demon on steroids with that kid because he had multiple disabilities and They asked the father what happened to him. And he said he it happened since he was an infant He was born with these demons and all these disabilities. These are superpower demons So how does prayer and fasting help our doubt and unbelief? It removes it It removes it and it has to be removed if you want a miracle from God now because they had doubt so they, they, the, the disciples had blown the, the exorcism they screwed up they were arguing with the scribes okay <laughs> the scribes didn't have any faith at all they just did things but by, by rote you know almost like Catholicism Here's what we do. You, you have a textbook, the liturgy, and you look through there and you see how to do a deliverance. But no. They had doubt and they had unbelief and the child didn't get healed. So when facing at that kind of spirit, they had to make sure this was removed to beat them the next time. Because some demons are super powered, some are just powerful. There's varying levels of Ephesians 6, correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> Eric the Red. But we have we have authority over them no matter how, how powerful they are. As if as they don't have doubt and unbelief. Th thank you. Perfect. I couldn't have said it better myself. So I keep Eric. Should you pass? What's that? And what part of your deliverance process should you pass? Well, either None or a lot depending on the person if you have lots of this I Do lots of that if you've got very little of it to none Probably don't need to have 40 days of fasting. It's not, it's not gonna It's not gonna work <laughs> Sir Exactly. That's exactly what happened. He also, right after he said that, he said that he called them the uh, faithless and wicked generation. Because faithless. Of, because of their unbelief. Faithless. Right. A lack of faith leads to what? Wickedness. Perfectly worded. All things, whatever you ask, there it is again. You ask for something that you were told you could already have. Right? You were told you could already have the Holy Ghost. You could have the gifts that God's no respecter of persons gifts gifts Holy Ghost power everything It's all yours Depending on your free will 98% of Christians they won't come and get any of that stuff. I'm talking to the 2% tonight I'm hoping for 2% If I do we can take this town apart You go and ask for what you've already been told you can have give me that Right? So you don't walk into fries. Walk up to the manager. Hey, I'm taking a bunch of watermelons out. I'm not paying for them. Give me them watermelons. That's not ITO. That's stupid. If God says this is yours, then you just go in and get it. Why? Because you want to please Him. Because without pistons, it's impossible to please God. How do you please God? You believe what He told you because it's Him. Yes, that's it. 
That's yours. You come in and get it and father's going This is my boy here. I can use this gal Look at that. Oh Boy Looks down at the mega church. Oh, I got a laser light show going. Let's go to the next one Let's go find some broken people who are looking for a moving of the power of God If you ask for it because you were told you could have it and then step out pistuo It's yours You take a promise of God He told you could have it and then you step out on that promise with no doubts and no unbelief. It's yours What's yours whatever you said Where's the your, yours book let's go over there and look at the books in your heart friend So what you're saying is you know when you know when you know <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Whoa yeah. Can somebody finish this teaching? I'm scared. <laughs> Who was that guy? <laughs> Eric, can you watch? Yes, sir. What'd you say? So you know when you know when you know. Because if you're asking questions, you obviously have doubt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm hesitant to answer that question. I think you're right. But it depends on the person. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know. Okay. You ask too much pride, then you know, you know, you know. Right. And the pride ain't gonna help you. So I'm sorry to play a game here with you, but I don't. I don't know. I don't know. So I know. I doubt. Well, that's okay. You're gonna fix it tonight. But the point he's trying to make it is right. Your internal knower, your spirit man. Uh, knows whether you have doubt or unbelief and so do the demons and so does the Holy Ghost The spirit world knows all about you and they'll call your bluff on it The Holy Ghost won't call your bluff. He'll try to protect you The demons will call your bluff on it. Oh You got a word of faith going there good demons love word of faith. They're blabbing it out all the time <laughs> If you come to God and ask for wisdom, He will give it to you, and He won't on a deed so He won't degrade you or say anything negative to you, right? Lord, could I have some wisdom? Well, you, you idiot! I went over that fifty times. You moron! He doesn't do that. He says, "Well, absolutely, come here, son. Come here, come here, sweetheart." See his attitude. It says he on a deed. He does not upbraid you. He doesn't say things critical of you. See, that's how Father rolls. It shall be given him period, but There's a but in there, but what but exactly what I'm teaching let them ask in pistis If you add this to your prayer request for wisdom or anything else right Wavering same Greek word dia crino Let's see do I like is gray prettier for oh, which matches here? What happens to they think blue they think gray then I'm not sure what should I do about that? I'm thinking about this better. I'm focusing on it. Maybe, maybe I should have got them at Sam's Club You see that's diacrino. I'm vacillating back and forth if I do that my prayer request crashed and burned yes. Correct yes. and it says he that wavers Is like Somebody in the ocean Driven by the wind and tossed around they don't know where they're going. They don't know what they're doing Translation their ministry is a failure Their Christian life's a failure because they're always flopping back and forth the one truth to the other one church to the other one laser light show to the other one belief <laughs> They're constantly chasing their tail and the demons are helping them do it Let not that man think he will receive anything from the Lord this and that equals a goose egg <laughs> So then maybe rather than 
asking for something you know you already have, thank them. And then, and then act upon it. Couldn't work out any better. Good. Instead of asking. Yeah. What he's saying is, what Eric's saying is, is great. Let's say you have a promise of God. You know what he promised you. Okay, now that's different from you praying for something that's not in the Bible. Let's say she has a need or she has a need. Or you have a personal request, right? That's not in the Bible. Okay? So you might need, you might mention, dear God, I need this for her. God said, hey, I'm going to give you the gift of healing. And so you do what Eric said Lord. Thank you for the gift of healing. That's proving you have pissed us and you're a believer See that you can't lose with thanks And if you do this you will get what from God Nothing, Nothing. why because without pissed us it's impossible to please God doubting and unbelief Displeases God. He's disappointed that you doubted what he said. That's why I asked that guy in the green. You mean to tell me the blood of Jesus that doesn't cover your past failures? What? No, let's fix that. See? He was having. And so, therefore, the demons. Throw your past in your face because they know you'd have doubts. You're being watched by the enemy. Yes, ma'am. So is fasting and prayer like the only way that you can use your, your uh, no. tools? No. No. Fasting and prayer, is that the only way to... No, the Bible says faith, pistis, comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. Okay. So the word of God would be your foundation. Then you recognizing you have unbelief and doubt then you take that to prayer and if it's really bad Then you might have to do a little bit of fasting Is double-mindedness a spirit? They cause double-mindedness. Yeah, now that's a that's a wholly different Bible study That's a, that's, a, that's a, the Greek word dipsychus. I got a whole different Bible study on that <clears throat> But yeah, it's caused cause Doubt and unbelief are part of being a dipsychus, a double-minded person. Jesus said, truly I say to you, if you have pissed us and do what? Are you, are, is healing in the atonement? Are you, yeah, I think it is. I'm, I read that. I'm, uh, uh, as soon as you flop around on something God said was yours, that's as soon as you lose it. It's gone. If you have pissed us, no, no, oh, and not do what? Oh boy, vacillate. You can do this to the fig tree. Die. What's your fig tree? Cancer, bad back, tuberculosis, that die. No doubt, no unbelief. That dies. A butt. Oh, take your medication. Take the meds. Meds are good. You got to be on meds if you have. <laughs> Am I going to condemn you? Absolutely not. Hey, we're friends here. We're, we're trying to help. We're not running people down. Uh, most of the time, I don't. Also, if you shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be not cast in the sea. And all things, whatever you ask, hey, you already promised I can have it, right? Give it here. Give me that. That means you believe God. I'm, I'm exercising my pistol by asking you because I expect to get it because you already said I could have it. I asked it in prayer, and I'm doing what? Pistol, stepping out with no. It's mine. See it? The pistis doesn't trigger until you light the fuse. Boom. IEDs don't go 
off until you run over them <laughs> Christianity doesn't work without verbs Mr. Wigglesworth, I I've got a bladder problem. You do come here from it. <coughs> <laughs> My God, I feel fun <coughs> Now the guys a plumber no education and God said hey, I don't need education. I Don't need any skills out of you. I need somebody who believes <coughs> I need somebody who will believe with no doubts and then test step out and I'll heal him. Bang! Instantly healed. Instantly healed. Mark 11. I truly say to you, whoever says this mountain be removed to be not cast in and does not doubt. Where's that doubt at? Oh no! You don't even have to speak it. The demons know you got it. Hello, it's in your heart. What's in your heart comes out of your mouth, dude. Some of you Christians here, you got a big mouth. <laughs> but but if they believe pistuo, they have pistis with no doubts and unbelief, and then step out on it. You got it. Bingo. You win. Winners. See, the law was do this, do that, say this, say that, don't do this, don't do that. No, that's gone now. Now it's faith. Faith pleases God, not keeping regulations. But it's harder for an educated man. Right? Yeah, very. Knowledge, the faith as a child. Right. It's harder for people to have. High IQs, yeah, they run into that problem all the time because they over process stuff. That's bad. Childlike faith brings miracles. Is it possible for somebody, is it possible to say, you know, like, okay, you're praying, and then if you would have a little bit of that, you know, on the chalkboard there, like, I might have a little bit, but then you step out in faith. Is that going to help you? You know what I mean? So it's something that's already dead before you step down, right? Okay. It's in your heart. Okay. And the way to kill it is prayer and fasting, correct? Yeah, or repentance. Now, I tried to get the green guy to repent up here and the lady here. I tried to get him to repent right in front of everybody. There was no there was no uh, fasting there. Right. They were just praying and they were confessing, see? Repenting. Yeah. They were, yeah, exactly. Boom. Right. You can get rid of it tonight. Yeah. You can do it tonight. Yeah. You you know what? You could come down here at this altar tonight. I'm not even making this up. <laughs> a lot of stuff I make up. I ain't making this up. <laughs> you come down here and say, "By God, I know exactly what the devil's been doing to me." Come on, Brother Mike, I cannot believe. I see why you were fooled all them years at the Assemblies of God religion. Right. I get it. I'm I'm in your shoes. I get the devil was tricking me. He gave me this word of faith garbage, but in my heart I had a little unbelief and a little doubt. And that was ruining all my prayers. And you know what? I'm gonna repent of it tonight. I'm gonna to, I'm gonna bind this thing and cast this thing out of me. And I'm gonna make the devil pay for every day, every year, every month. He trashed me. You could do that tonight. No fasting, no, no counseling, nothing. You could come down here. You and the Holy Ghost. Bang, get it done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, don't we have to have a fancy speaker and, and a, a bunch of zoo animals and a laser light show? No! <laughs> you come down here with your guts laying there and the Holy Ghost run right over to you. Oh, you want a laser light show, do you? Okay. There you go. How about that? You like it? There you go. Serve God now? There you go. That's how you get. Yeah. Oh, hill song. Yeah. Come on and give my autograph. Yeah, take that hill song. Stupid. Ignorance. God the Holy Ghost went through painstaking repetition to get this teaching across to his children he went overboard on it trying to push it in I just showed you three different instances where Jesus said I truly tell you if you have faith and 
moving mountains and fig trees the Spirit of God put that in there why because he didn't have anything else to put in there it was interesting no he wanted to push that through right. he's doing it again now he uses the real humans to illustrate it check this out here's here's the obvious one the first one the father of faith Abraham Romans 4 considered not his own body listen if you were a hundred years old uh, have you ever seen a naked hundred year old? Yeah, when I was in kindergarten <laughs> Grandma came to visit <laughs> And she got up before I did She went in and took a bath. This is back in the 50s and I woke up and said man, I gotta I gotta go pee That was the first thing I did every morning when I was in kindergarten if I woke up I had to go pee I walk into the bathroom looking for that toilet bowl and there's grandma Her <laughs> I didn't have to pee anymore <laughs> You see an 85 year old naked woman You don't need to pee no. You got to go <laughs> Now Abraham took a look at his body and said, "Hey, this I don't, I'm not even looking at that." See, faith is believing when what you see tells you nothing. Abraham said, "I see my body. I'm shot. I don't believe it. God said I'll have it. You believe God simply because it was He who said it, and no other reason." That's right, sir. Abraham had no proof whatsoever. Nothing. Then he took a look at Sarah. Wow. 80 90 year old woman <laughs> Let me tell you something when you're 80 90 year old woman. No offense. You ain't hot anymore yeah. <laughs> Not a lot of hotness there. Okay, you're not on a pole. You're in a tent <laughs> Abraham took a look at him. Oh my god. He took a look at her. He said I don't even care God told me I'll have a son. I don't care what she looks like She's got a womb and it's dried up like a prune I don't care. God told me I was having a son. Period. It's right there. This is terrible preaching, but there's truths in it. Abraham staggered not. What? Same Greek word. I said, can I get an erection? Can can she have a what I what happens if what if I can't you know where's the Viagra? None of it. He just said God said I'll have a child. I don't care what my body looks like. I don't care what her body looks like Amen. Period it's over Father said it that settled it Unbelief Well, the whole thing was love if you're putting around with unbelief, you're looking, figuring something out. Da, 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 you're looking back and forth. Well, I'm not sure. It generates unbelief. Doubt breeds unbelief. But he stood strong in what? Pistis. No doubts. No unbelief. Why? Because God said it. And he was fully persuaded. What is pistis? How is it defined? Full persuasion with no doubts and no unbelief. That what God had promised, he was able to perform. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Come on, sir. That sermon will preach. Yes. Trust me. A centurion. Oh, wow. Matthew 8. There it is. Jesus heard the sister and he said I can't believe it. I'm stunned. I never saw anybody with this much Piss this The centurion was like father Abraham. And he wasn't even Jewish He said if I can get To that Jewish Messiah my son is getting out of that bed All I got to do is get to him I'm gonna cover all my bases. I'm gonna send my servants after him first, and I'm gonna follow up behind him. 
That's exactly what he did He walks up to him. He says hey, don't even bother to come to my house I ain't worthy to have you under my roof. Just speak it here and my son will be healed there What is that? No unbelief no doubts pure pistis and he rode up on a horse which was pistulo he put his faith in action He sent his servants then he rode up You see how this all weaves together the Holy Ghost did this for a reason he's trying to get through to us somehow As you have what pistol stepped out on your faith. It's yours Don't you see it <laughs> He had pissed us here he stepped out with pistol and Jesus said because you did that you get what you want It's yours These are great scriptures. I'm telling you, the whole uh, the whole Bible is fantastic. Absolutely, no question. Matthew nine, check it out. They bring this guy down through the roof. Everybody's read this story. Nobody really understands. He's got paralyticus. He's got a spinal cord injury. He's laying on the bed. He can't even move. Jesus, seeing their faith, not the kid's faith. Listen carefully. Their faith. He saw their faith. God can see Pistuo because he's watching your behavior. He's watching you, listening to what you say. Did you say something that generated Pistuo, or did you file another complaint? Did you start bitching and moaning about something, or did you step out in pure pistis with no doubts and no unbelief? Which did you do? Somebody heard you when you opened your mouth. You opened your mouth, and somebody heard it. <laughs> Seeing their pistol, these guys are loading this guy down through the ceiling. That's pistol. Big time. We've had several people want to want to come over here for prayer, and they wanted to do that. We told them, no, we can't have a hole in the <laughs> Jesus then goes to the kid because the kid doesn't have pistols. <clears throat> He saw their faith. They're fine The kids not fine why he's suffering from God only knows what the clinical depression who wouldn't be with spinal cord injury Sorrow and sadness misery a technon is a young boy Okay, probably junior high something like that so this is a kid who was loved by his family and friends and whoever brought them we know there was at least four of them right so somebody loved this boy and they brought him to Jesus why like the centurion they said to themselves pistis taking their pistuo once we get him there he's walking home they got him there and he couldn't get in to see him so pistuo doesn't stop with a demonic block Christians give up when the demons block them. Pistuo finds another way. Christians pack up their tent and go home, pass gas and weep and cry and go to bed. <laughs> People with Pistuo, they find another way. A disciple doesn't go home with a no. A Christian does. The four guys that brought him said, hey, we can't get him in there. Well, what are we going to do about it? One of the construction guys opens up his mouth and says, hey these these are cheap roofs Let's haul him up there We'll dump him right down in Jesus's lap. That'll teach him from excluding us <laughs> you know, Like a Black Friday deal. We're getting in somehow <laughs> Boom Jesus says I see their faith, but I see this broken heart first the boy as soon as he sees their faith he goes right to the boy what he tells him the sorrow have courage be courageous your sins 
hearts are are forgiven What's that telling us the kid was killing himself? Uh, that guy was standing here regrets Maybe he got in an accident doing something stupid like Ridiculousness yes. ever seen that show it's loaded with people with ADHD They've all got it really bad and they're all jumping off buildings two stories with nothing down there It's unbelievable The demons have got their mind. They just jump Well, they get hurt and they go oh my god, what was I thinking later on see after you bust yourself up reality kicks in and you go What was I doing? And he was full of sorrow and clinical depression and sadness and whatever it was and Jesus had to Encourage him see notice the love here notice the compassion notice where God Pointed his attention here. See everything Jesus did father did <clears throat> So if Jesus said that means father was hundred percent behind it father saw the guys in the roof, but he saw the kid first How about this one here's a story acts 14 Paul looked at the man of Lystra. He had impotent feet being a coloss limping he limped limped from his mother's womb. He was a congenital disability to his foot He had never walked before he was born with it, right? Like these poor kids here. They have congenital conditions Paul steadfastly staring at the kid Edu seeing he had pistis to be healed now. How did he know that I the Bible doesn't reveal it? But like I said pis pistis can be seen in a person Pistuo generates behavior. It's a verb you can tell Somebody has pistuo then you can tell people who don't have it You don't go over and get prayer from that person because you know they're spiritual losers You're looking for somebody who's got a little faith who yes. pray for you That's, right. yes, you're right, brother. <laughs> That's how that works He saw he had pissed us what did he have no doubt and no unbelief something about that kid caught the word of God and he took off at that moment and Paul noticed it somehow and he yells at him to stand on your feet. Look at that. As soon as Pistus kicked in, Paul then added the Pistuo. He yelled at him. You, you can say unto this mountain, you could say unto this fig tree, you can say to this disabled boy, if you have the Pistus, you just Pistuo the kid, get up! Oh, we don't do that in our church. We have a manual. <laughs> Yeah, your church sucks. <laughs> I'm talking about Holy Ghost power, yes. not church stuff. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh -oh. I'm going to have to leave early. Stand on your feet. And the boy, having no and no, leaped up and headed for the long jump pit. He was walking all over the place. Hallelujah. Why? See that a kid had pistis. Paul had pistis. They combined their pistis. Paul threw in the pistuo. Stand up. The kid leaps. Yes, Lord. The woman with cervix cancer. This is a story everybody's read. Matthew nine. A woman who had hemorrhea. What is that? She was hemorrhaging out of her vagina. She had been sick for twelve years. She came behind and touched. The hem of his garment because she said within herself pistis is in your spirit man. It's in there pistuo is the outward expression of the pistis in here She says within herself pistis all I have to do is pistuo the garment step out and I will be sozo delivered of this hemorrhage Yeah, I do this study once a year because I I do it for me. I'm just enjoying my own study Amen. Jesus turned to the woman and says daughter Same thing he said to the kid on the cot Because she was scared she's around a bunch of strangers. She's bleeding She came out and grabbed the tassel. She's done all kinds of things where she stepped out of her comfort zone 
Oh, that should have landed. You see, pistuo causes you to step out of your natural human comfort zone. Oh, and that's what triggers the miracle. See, once you're in your comfort zone, I'll be teaching on that in two weeks. Once you're in your comfort zone, that's where your life ends. You just don't know it. He says, hey, be of, be of good courage. Hey, cheer up. Be strong. Your pistis, no doubt, no unbelief. If I just touch his garment, I'm healed. I know it. Period. And I'm going to pistol, push my way in, and dive at that thing. Go in peace and behold of your play. How about the prostitute? Luke 7. Jesus said to the sinner woman, your pistis has sozo delivered you. Go in peace. She had gone in there and taken the alabaster box. Which was not the fancy perfume that she used on her better John's. That wasn't the point of the story. Breaking the alabaster box was a story about born again Christians who want to go to the next level and they just bang end their lives right there. My life's over. I'm going all the way in with my call from God. She broke the alabaster box. Guess what happened? She got forgiven. The dying leper, right? Hey, arise, go your way. You're what saved you? There it is. It delivered you. So it's on. This guy come running up to Jesus and got completely healed. Why? He had no doubt if he could get there and no unbelief. I'll be healed of my leprosy. Period. Anyway, <coughs> anything you can believe for and step out and get with no doubt and unbelief, it's yours. A mother's desperation. The love of a mother, that's the strongest thing in the human world that's for sure for a child not the husband the child Matthew 15 behold a woman of Canaan came out of the coast she wasn't even Jewish she heard about the supernatural miracle working Messiah and something generated in her what was it well it wasn't that and it, I know it wasn't that you don't travel that far with all of that Abraham went three, three days to sacrifice Isaac, okay. If he'd have had any of that, he would have returned on day two. She comes out of the coast. She cried, "Crow God's on me!" To yell and yell louder. She was yelling. She had a yelling fit. Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is demonized. Demonized, mine. Being tortured by demons. Jesus said, "Woman, great is your." Is this what does that mean this Gentile woman had no doubt and no unbelief that if he spoke the word here her daughter would be healed clear back in Syria she had no doubts so she stepped out on her pistons what was that she traveled days to get there she continued with her pistol yelling at Jesus in spite of the fact the church people told her to shut up if you go to a church and you start yelling in the front row, they will escort you out. <laughs> Which is the opposite of what God wants done with the person. He wants him here to be delivered. Woman, your pistis, no doubt and unbelief, is great. Be it to you as you get it the way you want it. When you don't have so got there means a young girl grade schooler she was a young girl and it says she went home and she found her daughter the devil out of her daughter 
and her daughter was thrown on the bed it says Laid was mistranslated the demon just probably threw her Before he left threw her down. No and that happens here. Sometimes the demons will pitch a fit and Because they got to go I didn't get any amens on that it's gonna be a <laughs> long night for me, but <laughs> <laughs> two blind men. What did they have? Pistus. What did they have? Pistuo. Jesus said to two blind. Do you pistuo? Do you do you believe that I'm able to do this? Well, that was a rhetorical question. He'd already seen him following him down the street. Listen, you got a lot of faith, pistuo and pistus. If you follow somebody and you're blind, well, that takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of that too. Yes, Lord, we do. That was a re what, what do you mean? We've been following you for six blocks. How did he get the miracle? No, no. According to your pure pistis, if it's only the size of a mustard seed, it's powerful enough to move a mountain if it's pure. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Blind Barnabas, everybody knows the story. Mark chapter 10 the church people showed up. They said hey shut up Stop making a noise. We don't do that in this church. We'd like things done decently in their order Okay, you don't like any miracles there. Do you? <clears throat> He's yelling out more son of David have mercy on me What do you want me to do for you? Aren't you seeing this? Pistis and Pistuo gets what you want from God I want to see again. He says duh Well, I don't even need to pray for you. You've got the pistis just go your way Oh man, that should have landed I'll follow up on this one years ago A century ago a woman named uh, Mary Wordsworth Etter used to travel around the country and later on the same the same freak anointing fell on a woman named Catherine Kuhlman and They had this The Holy Ghost would just fall and people would get healed and without them even praying for them. They didn't hold healing lines like Oral Roberts and A. A. Allen did they just held the service and the Spirit of God fell boom People were getting healed all over the place When both of them held a service they expected it to happen That should have landed That should have landed People who have pissed us expect Expect miracles. Church people expect laser light shows and the naked cowboy playing at your church service. There he is, praying at the women's service. And, okay, we don't need a naked cowboy around here. What we need is some people who believe without any doubt and without any unbelief. Now, just for your information, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. You don't even need to get prayer if you've got pistis. And you stepped out on your pistol. He didn't even spend a minute praying for him. He didn't need to. Wow. The boy on the cot believed him and took courage. Jesus said, Go home now. Never prayed for the guy. That should have got in. If you got pissed us and you've already stepped out on your faith, you don't even need anybody to pray for you. Click, it happens. Folks, I'm not making this up. I'm reading it to you. I'm just This isn't Mike Smith night. This is God's holy word. You got nothing to do with me. Stephen and Barnabas, what are you talking about? Here they are. Check this out. Stephen started out as a table server. He's a busboy. In the revival see 
the reason your ministry sucks and your Christian life stinks is because you wanted to start out at the top and you didn't want to start out at the bottom. Right. Right. So God can't use you. You got too much arrogance and pride. That's right. You're to use a slang term, you're a spiritual turd. <laughs> okay now. So you're not going to get anything. Because you don't want to do any grunt work. When I opened the house of healing over there, I read these scriptures and it clicked. And I'd been such a horrible sinner, I was sorry for my sin. So I just wanted to be, like the Bible says, a servant. I didn't get any cards printed up. Prophet Mike. I didn't need no stupid after the service at the house of healing for years I'm emptying out the buckets putting the paper and plastic back in the buckets I'm cleaning up the bathroom I'm wiping out the toilet all the saints come in healed peeing all over I go in and clean it up you know why I didn't want to be an apostle. i had been called to be a servant So I cleaned the toilet Stephen He didn't come in here looking for an apostle job, huh? That's for the prophetic movement. He came in there to bus tables mm -hmm. Somebody's got to be listening to me tonight Stephen started out of the table busser Cleaning up after the saints ate and picking stuff up and cleaning it up wiping it up and The Holy Ghost saw him He said hey, this is a guy I can use He's a humble person He He just wants to serve see God man looks on the outward appearance God looks on the heart the Spirit of God looked inside Stephen and what he saw in there was a servant He said, I can trust this guy with my mighty Holy Ghost power. Yes, I can trust him. Guess what happened? Boom. This guy had a spectacular ministry. You know what the greatest thing he ever did? They stoned him to death, and there was a rat, there was a Pharisee watching him. King Saul. Saul Paul was watching him. He was holding the coats and he wanted him dead and Stephen prayed for him before he died he said Lord don't lay this thing to their charge and God heard him and came after Paul on the Damascus Road Stephen's greatest miracle Stephen's greatest miracle healing all these people raising them from the dead no And saved Paul Amen. None of it would have happened had he not been willing clean out the toilets fill the bags Pull out the vomit I said Lord are you sure this is the ministry you want me in I started asking him some questions so I saw the guy on TV with the yacht Memo Mansion I said Lord I can do that. I know how to do that Oh, son, I got a different plan for you. Why don't you stay and clean up this vomit? <clears throat> Just keep cleaning up the vomit. Amen. Instead of rebelling and getting arrogant, I said, I'll stick with the vomit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I got to be talking to somebody. Somebody's got to be ready to break out of their pathetic Christian life and become a disciple. Somebody here has got to be ready. Yeah. <laughs> what Stephen have? Check this out. He had no doubts and no unbelief. He had the Holy Ghost and he had Holy Ghost power. Most Christians do not have that. Why? Power develops only when you exercise it. Churchgoers with big fat fannies stuck in pews. They're used to sitting down doing nothing. So the dunamis power never develops, even though they have 
pistis and they have the Holy Ghost When I was in the assembly of God religion over half the people spoke in tongues and had been filled at some time with the Holy Ghost and weren't doing anything for God nothing You can have the Holy Ghost, but That doesn't mean you have the power of the Holy Ghost Every born-again Christian has the Holy Ghost by definition Very few Christians have any dunamis power Why? They weren't willing to be a table server they didn't want to put bags and buckets. They didn't want to clean the toilet. Hey, I'm a prophet. I say I'm a prophet. I, I'm an apostle. Where's my yacht? Stupid. The power, dunamis power comes from serving, not riding around in a limo. <laughs> Barnabas, full of pistis and the Holy Ghost led many people to the Lord. What do you need to do tonight? Mark chapter 9. Father said, the guy mentioned it earlier, Lord, these, these disciples have been trying to cast this demon on my boy. And they can't do it. So now we, as a last resort, brought him over to you. You think you can do anything? See, Christians are racked with a lifetime of disappointments and as the devil heaps one disappointment on you after the other they start to weigh down on you and it blurs how you see life okay? instead of seeing a Holy Ghost victory every time you turn around you're starting to see the negative in people <clears throat> the negative in the situation the negative in the family the negative at the job you start seeing things in a negative prism why because you chose to do it no the devil beat you into it over a period of time chronic disappointments beat the person down they beat the person down and this prism is not one of pistis or pistuo it's one of doubt and unbelief I was talking to a lady one time in the counseling session. She said, I'd love to be healed today, but I don't know. It just seems to happen to everybody but me. What was she really saying? I've had all these disappointments. Now they're stacking up. Now I see everything through a darkened prism. If you could do anything. He had taken his son to every faith healer in Palestine. Every scribe, every Pharisee, nobody could deliver him. Now the disciples of Christ couldn't deliver him. Now he's on another dive down. So he says to God, if you can do anything. That sounds like a stupid question, but if you look at his background, it's a perfectly normal question. He had had so many disappointments and was so worn out from having a disabled child If you've never had a disabled child, you don't understand the exhaustion The parents go through taking care of a disabled child love keeps them there He says well if you can do anything have compassion on us and help us and Jesus said had he been a minister, he would have given him a 15-minute lecture about how he had compassion and how dare you assume I don't have any compassion. Jesus wasn't a pastor of a church. He just said to the guy, here's the nuts and bolts of it. It's impossible without pistis to please God. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. What was the guy doing? He was stating his doubt and unbelief. So Jesus was trying to help him. See? Just like he did the kid on the cot. 
your heavenly father is always hundred percent of the time in a position to try to help you He wants to help you not run you down Yeah, sir, you an just answered your own question. Uh, in the but my answer is yeah, you asked me that. I've seen that hundreds of times. That's yeah, very common in Christianity. What he was saying there's you know, people people get worn out and they they try to stand on the word and then they word of faith it and they, they speak out the scriptures and they repeat the scriptures, they try to yell them into you. But if there's doubt or unbelief in that System in your soul You'll block it the demons will play off of it. Yes, sir Faith is the currency of heaven you cannot come with a fake currency and purchase something from somebody who knows what is right and wrong Amen. He's teaching next week <laughs> <laughs> Love you preacher all right, let's go to uh, the father cried to Jesus, Lord, I did step out on my faith. Remember when I told you, word of faith doesn't work. If you step out on your faith, but you have unbelief with you, click, it blocks the miracle. I do have pistuo. I stepped out of my faith. I brought the kid to them. I brought my kid to you. But I also brought you And he said it it came out of his mouth see I Don't actually have any real skills at all except counseling That's the only actual skill. I have. everything else is bluff. I Learned years ago That the more I let that person talk and the more I listen to that person They'll finally tell me all about themselves and they don't even know it. All Jesus did was listen to the guy. He said listen to Nicodemus Listening and sooner or later it'll come out of your mouth Who you really are And the guy said it if All right God's calling you to a life of business and pastuo He wants you to step out of your faith true faith without any unbelief or doubt but But these things block it The number one blocker is what? Fear. Fear is the number one blocker. When somebody first gets born again, after they get saved, the demons encourage them to witness to others. What do you say? The demons encourage them to witness to others because they want them to receive all the negative responses To try to discourage them If a new convert allows those discouragements to settle into his soul he becomes a statistic Jesus outlined in the parable of the sower they believe for a while and then when persecution tribulation and trials come their way 
they fade out and these are the biggest pistis killers I've noticed in my ministry over the years having ought for yourself the lady that was down here remember she said what does ought mean it's that negative sense or feeling you have about yourself that's a pistis killer pesticide this chronic disappointments ruins your expectation of a miracle. Negative emotions, false teachings, unbelief and doubt, and the number one problem is fear. Fear. Some people are afraid to do what Stephen did, to be a servant. And then receive all that power from God. Some people are scared of being in the ministry. They're scared of serving God. Some people are afraid to be healed. Some people don't want to be healed for various reasons. Now, look, whenever I teach this thing, I teach it once a year. Hey, I know it's it's tough. It's tough. I go over it, you know, like a second grader pounding at each point. I do my best. I'm not a teacher I've Done the best I could But some of you caught this thing A couple of you a few of you and That two or three people here or more You see how you've been blocked your ministry has been blocked your finances blocked your family's blessings blocked your health blocked your deliverance from demons blocked and now you know why you are carrying around pistis cancer there's a little unbelief in there a little doubt that what God said may not be true I know. I know. You can repent of it tonight without fasting 40 days. You can get healed tonight without fasting 40 days. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. You have doubt and unbelief and you recognized it here tonight you recognized it. you can get rid of it God will remove it it can happen to you everybody has to go through it Mary Wordsworth Edder didn't wake up one day and go hey, I'm going into a worldwide ministry. Hmm. I think I'll start that tomorrow That's a good idea Lord. Thank you. It never happened She resisted it She was a female in a man's world She was scared It took years for God to move her into that position to take that ministry But she was like Stephen she was like Stephen. She was a broken woman. She buried 11 of her 12 children. She knew what human pain and sorrow was. She had compassion, genuine compassion, God compassion for people. And God could trust her with his mighty power. When she came into town, the whole town got saved. They closed down the bars, everything. Everybody came to Christ There wasn't one miracle she never saw every miracle She started out with unbelief and doubt She started out with fear She repented That woman shook up the world 
People still buy her books today. She's got a whole rack of books at the book Christian bookstore. Right? You ever read about her? Incredible story. You can repent of doubt and unbelief tonight. You can admit it and confess it. And you can get the spirit of doubt out of you. Because there is such thing as a demon of doubt. And he is a professional. He's a genius. He uses logic on people to get them to question. Has God really said that? Did God really say that? He got Eve. He nailed Eve in the Garden of Eden. You can repent of it tonight. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I just went over my Pistis Bible study again. I love doing that Bible study, and I thank you for it. I thank you for the revelations you gave me about it. But tonight, there's people here who have unbelief and doubt, like I, I had and everybody has. Every Christian has it. There's a couple of people here who want to be a Stephen. They want to start out as a table server. And they want to end up with the Holy Ghost and dunamis power. But to do that, they have to sacrifice themselves. They have to sacrifice themselves. And I'm asking, Lord, tonight, Whoever those people are, even if it's only two or three, I will rejoice when they come up here and break their alabaster box and end it. It's time for futile lives to come to an end. It's time for you to do something for eternity. It's time to stop living for yourself and just your family and just your little group. It's time for you to make sacrifices. You know God's calling you. You've got a good heart and the devil used fear on you. He used doubt. He used unbelief. He used criticism of others. He stripped your support away from you. Your family doesn't support you. Your friends don't. Your church doesn't. The church didn't want you. If the church kicked you out, you're in a prime position tonight for the Holy Ghost to find you. <coughs> Just repent of it tonight. Did anybody catch this vision tonight of what Pistis and Pistuo is? Just raise your hand. Oh, that's encouraging. Wow. Well, that makes me feel better. Thank you for that. Is anybody here see that they have to break their alabaster box and become like Stephen and would be willing to do it tonight? Anybody? Come down here and see me then. If you're willing to cash in your life here, Stand here and face me right here. Perfect. You see you have unbelief and doubt. You see you've been questioning God. You see that. You can sense it. And you want to end it. You want this thing stopped. This has got to come to an end. None of us are getting any younger. I can remember like yesterday. I was in my 20s. My God, I'm in my 60s now. I mean, it just flies by. It flies by. I'm not making that up. It flies by. One guy was down here earlier and said he was 45 years old. Thought he was old. When he said 45, I thought, my God, would I, I'd give anything to be 45 again. The Bible's right. Your, your life is like a vapor. It just fizzles away. It's gone. And on the other side is the gates of hell. For most people on the other side is heaven and the judgment seat of Christ at that judgment seat of Christ Your rewards for eternity will be determined If you as the Bible said pissed your life against the wall 
and wasted it your rewards if you make it to heaven will be minuscule you have a chance tonight to change that instead of crawling into heaven with no rewards you could go in like the disciples rejoicing because they sacrificed themselves and they broke their alabaster box they just cracked it. Break. you can end your life tonight you can be healed tonight and you know you need to do it because your time is running out it's been like that it was 10 years ago you can remember it just like that 10 years went by just like that I'm not kidding you 10 years just blew by like that didn't it it's gone the next 10 is gonna to blow too but you're not gonna waste the next 10 no that's not gonna happen you like prophetic stuff do you you've been called by God and you're gonna answer that call there's some prophecy for you like that you're gonna change your life you're gonna humble yourself you're gonna break your alabaster box you're gonna get rid of that pride and that arrogance you're gonna end this thing tonight why because you have pistis it just has a little doubt and unbelief in it if you remove that doubt you will have pure pistis you can move mountains if it's just that big that's what it said let's pray come on dear Jesus I've got unbelief and doubt in my soul and I'm so incredibly sorry God have mercy on my soul I've been living for years thinking I had faith and I didn't know I was sabotaging it I just saw it tonight with the scriptures brother Mike was sharing he's right if I add unbelief in my faith it ruins it it ruins it that's why things don't happen that's why I don't have any miracles that's why I'm not healed that's why I'm not delivered that's a, I figured it out tonight Lord you help me figure it out Thank you, Jesus. I'm repenting tonight in the name of Jesus. I renounce doubt and unbelief by the authority of the Word of God. I renounce the sin in my life. I renounce my past that's been nailed to the cross of Calvary. I renounce demons and sin and wickedness in the name of Jesus. I refuse to live like this anymore. I renounce this ugly, unclean spirit of lust for food and sex. I renounce this greed and this pride. I come against it. I come against it in the name of the Lord. I renounce this ugly spirit of food, diabetes, and heart attacks. And come out in the name of Jesus. I renounce having doubt and unbelief. I renounce questioning the authority of the Word of God. I renounce it in Jesus' holy name. I command you, Satan. I command you, Satan. Loose your hold of me now. Loose your hold on me right now. Come out now, I said. Bitterness. Unbelief. Resentments. Come out of there. Come out of me. Come out. Get out of there, buddy. Get out. Come out, buddy. Right Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out of me right now. Come on, break that alabaster box. Break it. Break that alabaster box. I'll break it tonight. Satan, I hate your guts. I command you, go from my family. Go from my children. Go from my body. Get out of my body right now. You're being the fear. Come on there right now. Insecurity. Insecurity and doubt. Insecurity, doubt, and unbelief. Come out. Insecurity. Come out. Lust and sin. Come out. Right now. Get out of there. Come out. Get out of there. Come out. Come out of that body. Right now. 
Get out of there. Come out of there. Come out. Keep talking. Come out right now. Come out of there. Shake out of there. Come out of there. Come out right now. Go. Come out of there, buddy, right now. Come out of there, you witch. Right now. Leave her brain. Leave her brain. Leave her brain. Come out of there, you witch. Right now. Put me your spirit. Go. Come out right now. Get out of there. Come out and teach your body name. Get out. Insecurity. Unbelief. Now. Hurry up. Get out of there. Insecurity. Rejection. Abandonment. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. You're not hiding tonight. You got the annoying. You're going to use it. Yeah, let your tears go. Come on. Let them go. Unbelief and doubt. Come on out. Using food as a comfort. Come out. Go now. Come on, buddy, right now. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out. There he is. There he is. Come on out. There he comes. Out. Come out. Out. Come on, that body right now. Come on, that body right now. I said. Frustration. Come out. Go now in Jesus' body name. Come out. Come out of the spine. Come out of there. You man hater, come out of that body. You man hater, come out. Come out. Abuse, come out. Verbal abuse, come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of the body right now. Come out of there. Get out of the body right now. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Come on out. Get out of there. Right now. Go now. Come out of there, you witch. Go. Come out quicker. You got the annoying users. There they come. Keep coughing. Come on, honey. Let's go. Come on now. Come out right now. All of them tonight. All of them. Come out. We will still be able to come out, buddy. Come on out. Come out. Disappointments. Come out. Disappointments for men. All the men. All the bad men. All the man haters. Come out right now. Husband hater. Come out. Come on, buddy. Go now. Come out right now. Come on out. Come on out. Go. Come on out. Go. Come out. Come out. Just repent of it. Come out. Come on. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. Let your tears go. Come on. I'm so sorry, Lord. Come out of there. You pervert. Come out, buddy. Plus, come out of there. Come out, you pervert. Right now, I said, you're not dragging this man of God to hell. Get out of him right now. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come on, sweetie. You got a nice annuity. You're just not using it. Come on. You got a good heart. Use it. Come on out. Let your tears go. Come on out. Come out, Satan. Every ugly man that ever touched your body comes out tonight. Go. Come on, that's something. Come out of a womb. There they come. Keep coughing. Come on out. Satan. Pornography. Come out of that body. Anger. Rage. Lust. Out now. Come out of there. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Now let your tears go. Come on, sweetheart. Let your tears go. Fight hard now. Fight hard. Fear. How you doing? What you need, honey? My name is Gabby. I love you. We're from Boston Valley. Now, what's wrong with you? Oh, oh, oh. And I had four surgeries in three months. For what? Uh, macular hole, 
Now listen, that's not our problem. I know. I have doubt and unbelief, sir. You no, that's not our problem. Now, when you was young, did somebody verbally abused you? My whole life. My whole life. Were you always bossed around and told what to do and criticized yes, when you were younger? Yes, sir. Yeah. And did you, how many husbands have you had? Are they, did they do the same thing? The last one did. The last one did. This is Harley, who's been great for His dad did, yes, sir. Yeah, his dad did. Okay. Now, turn around this way so nobody can see you. Now, just close your eyes, okay, and relax. You're all tense, so just relax, okay? Take a big breath, big breath. Look at you. Big breath, breathe. Father God, I want you to go back in this woman's life. I know you love her. She's got a good heart. But she has been viciously abused and cursed at and cursed upon and people have put curses on her. And because of that, her whole body is falling apart. Her whole body is falling apart. And the surgeons are trying to fix each little piece by piece. But she'll never be healed because they've all cursed her. And tonight, we must forgive all these people. All the bad men, all the husbands, both her parents, her brothers and sisters, everybody took a shot at her. Everybody did. And she's hardened up against it, the fight against it. And tonight she's going to let her tears go so she can be healed. And this spirit of infirmity can leave her body. Father God, touch now. Spirit of infirmity, I curse you. Come out of that body now. Come on out of that body. Rejection, criticism, verbal abuse, word curses. Out. Come out of there. Come out of the body right now. Take a big breath and blow. Blow. Good girl. Blow again. Come on out, devil. Come out of her right now. Quickly. Come on out. Come out of that body. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out. Every curse break off of her. Every curse break. Every curse break off. Break, break, break. Break. Break off. Every word curse. Every person that degraded her. Every person that ran her down. The husbands. The relatives. The church people. We forgive them all. And I command you, Satan, lose your hope. Lose your hope. Lose your hope. Lose. Loose his legs. Loose his body. Heal. Every curse, come off. Every curse, come off. Every one of them. Come off. Foot, I command you, heal. Heal. Heal in Jesus' name. I forgive all these horrible people. I forgive them all. I repent of chronic unbelief and doubt. I repent of it. I'm never going to call God a liar again. Never. Heal. 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 Get out of Come out of there. Uh, my body. Take a big breath. Come out. There he is. He's right there. Fear me. Come on out. Fear. Come on out of there. Fear. Take a breath and blow. And a girl. Blow again. Spirit of fear, I command you. Come out. Come out of her body. Come out of her. Come out of her. Every ugly man that used her for her time and her money and her body. Come on. Come on out right now. Every one of them. 
Out. Out. Come on. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out. Spirit of fear, I bind your power. Come out of the woman of God. She does believe. She does believe. Come out. She does believe. Keep coughing. Come out. Spirit, come out of me. Come out of me right now. I command you to come out of my body right this second. Get out of my body right now. Go, I Go in Jesus' name. Come on, sweetheart. Fight back. You got the anointing. Just release it. I command you, evil spirit. Come out of my body right this second. What happened? What happened? What happened, what happened when you're praying? Did I sit down? No, okay. Where? What happened? What's she trying to say? I don't know. He told me that there was a curse on my foot. I, I want at you to look at your, your whole body's cursed. Everything was cursed. Everybody dumped on you. Toes or toes. No, that's not. That's a spirit in there. You got a spirit of infirmity in your body that got in from people cursing. <laughs> It started when you were little. <laughs> usually a mother. It usually starts with a mother who's a nitpicker or critical of the kids or they're hard to please. Or the dad disappears. Or the dad. My dad committed suicide. What was his name? His name was Jack. Jack, okay. Now take a big breath. Take a big breath and breathe out. Jack, Jack, you come out of there right now. Jack, come out. Come out of your daughter right now. Get out of there. Every demon from Jack, come on out. Every demon from Jack, out. Right now, you leave your daughter. She has a heavenly father now. She doesn't need a dad. Go now. Come out of there. Come on out. Go. Leave her kidneys right now. Leave them kidneys. Leave them kidneys. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come on out. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Okay. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Satan, lose your hold. I repent of this insane life I'm living. No more doubting. No more unbelief. No more listening to demons. Stop. Say that I said stop. Stop. Say it. There you go. Louder. Stop. Stop. Come on out. He's coming out right now. There he is. It's your dad. It's your dad. Come on. Stay back. Come on out. Come on out. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out of there. Come out of there quickly. Come out quickly. Come on, get, let's keep your stomach. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out of there quickly. Come out of that stomach right now. Every demon from her abusive dad. Her, there he is. Here he comes. Go. That's him right there. Come on out. Come out. There he is right there. Come out. That's him right there. Here he comes. It's her dad. It was her dad. I was Come out right now. Over there with Bert last week. I know. Oh, how'd you do? I filled up two judges. <laughs> come on out. What's your dad's name? Her dad's name is Jack. Jack, you come out of there right now. Come on, Jack, quickly. Come out. Jack, come out right now. Come out of her spine. There he is. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come out of her spine right now. Come on out. That's him right there. There he is. Spirit of infirmity from Jack. Come out. Jack, come out of that body. Jack. Come on out. Come out. Jack, come out in Jesus' name. Say it. Yeah, come out. Get out of that body right now. Jack, come out right now. Get out there, you witch. Come on out. Come out of there, you witch. And all the familiar spirits, all the new age, all the witchcraft. Come on out. Get out of there. 
I told you to come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. How you doing? Huh? I've been having uh, so much of a, uh, a battle. A battle. Oh, it's a battle, all right. The devil wants to keep you bound up. You got a nice anointing, and you're going to start using it. Take a breath. Come on out, devil, right now, quickly. Come on out. Come out of there. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on that stomach. You get out of that body right now. Come out. Come out of her. Come out of her right now. Come out right now. Here they are. Keep going. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Tell her to keep coughing. They're starting to come out. Tell her to cough. Come on out right now. Come out. Hurry up. Out. Out. Come out right now. Come out, Satan. Come out, Satan. Get out in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hurry. Come out of her. Go. Come out, Satan. Go, you spirits. Go, you filthy spirits in Jesus' mighty name. I feel you. Come out. I know you're there. Come out. Oh, there we go. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Rebuke you. Come out, you rotten devil. Rejection, abandonment, abuse. Come on out. Rejection, abandonment, abuse. Come on out. Come, there it is. Holiness. Here he comes. I command you to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come out of there. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. This is the protection. I come out. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come out of that body. You, you. Come out of there. Go. You don't want your blessings anymore. You don't want something. Come out. Come out. Come out. You want the love of God. Come out. Self hatred. Come out. Self hatred. Bad men. Ugly men. Come on out. Go. Go. Come on out. Go. Out. 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 Come on. Come on. Get out of there. Get out of there. Go. Come out. Come out. Go. Get out of that body, Satan. I command you, loose the man of God. Loose this man of God. There they come. Go. There they come. Go. Come on out. There they come. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, loose your hold. Every demon out. Every demon out. You rotten devils. The Holy Ghost is here. That means you get your face kicked in. Hey, come up here. Hey, come here. Hey. Hey, what's your name? My name's Larry. Uh, uh, how'd you get disabled? What happened? Uh, in 1988, uh, someone shot me when I stood up work. Somebody what? Shot me. And so oh, I, have, I have a bullet lodged in my spine. I'm L1 T12 complete. Oh. And so uh, I... So what? And so I, I've been watching you online, and I heard about you on Omega Man. So I've been coming here almost three months now. You have? Yeah. Three months. Yeah, yeah, three months almost. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. I was out. I had to have a surgery. I apologize. Uh, listen, uh, you were how old when you got shot? I just turned, I uh, think, 21. Okay, and then before that, what kind of sin were you in? Same sex, a same sex relationship. What happened is uh, the, the Lord was bisexual or gay. This is gay. The Lord was telling me to get out of that, and I was trying to get out of it. But the individual I was with wouldn't let me go, and he told me that he'll kill me if I left him. Did he shoot you? He, he, he shot me. Yeah, What's he shot his, name? his name is Damon. After he shot me, he killed himself. Oh wow! Now. 
but but uh, now uh, my, I've been doing a lot of deliveries and I have forgiven him. Okay, and uh, I'm doing everything because I, I've heard you several times on the Mega Man and everything that he's teaching about forgiving and letting go and binding and loosening. I've been doing that. Okay, uh, what was the name again? His name? Yeah, uh, Damon. Okay, ready? Now, Lord Jesus, I want to talk to you for a minute about Damon. I know it's too late for him. Uh, the devil got him. But if he were here tonight, I would do exactly what you told me to do. I would love my enemies and bless those who curse me. I would pray for those who despitefully use me. And I would pray for Damon if he was here tonight. I can't do that. It's too late. But when he was young, he had bad feelings about Damon. And Damon allowed demons to enter this body. Sexual perversion demons. Bitterness and anger came in after the shooting. Frustration. Chronic pain. Damon put a curse on this man of God. Physically cursing him and spiritually cursing him. And tonight, Lord, every evil spirit from Damon, every demon from Damon, we bind your power. Every spirit of perversion that got in and went dormant and tried to hide. Every spirit of fear, sadness, depression, loneliness. We bind your powers of this man of God. Spirit of infirmity, blocking his healing and walking again. You spirit in Jesus' mighty name. We forgive these people. We have mercy on their souls. And every one of these spirits have got to come out. Okay, take a breath and blow. Good blow. Come on out now. Damon, come out of there quickly. Come on. Come on out. Come out of there. Leave, you filthy spirit. Mind control. Come out. Come on out in Jesus' mighty name. Right now. Hurry up. Let this man of God go. Let him go. Let him go. Come out. Come on out. Come on out. Damon, in the name of Jesus. If you were here right now, we would pray for you. But we want your evil spirits out. Come on out of there right now. Stop blocking his healing. Restore. Restore. Come out, devils. Doubt and unbelief. Go. Doubt and unbelief. Go. Go right now. Come out of there. Perversion. Homosexuality. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Sodom. Come out. Come on out quickly. Come out of this man of God. Come out of the man of God. Come out of there in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Come out. Go now. Father God, I call down his ministry, whatever it is. I know he has one. I command all doubt and unbelief to get out of that body. You spirit of infirmity, you come out of that spine. You get out of there right now. Go now. Get up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry. Come out. Come out of there. Every spirit from childhood. Violence. Anger. Fighting. Killing. 
murder, all of it, every bit of it, every ounce of evil. Leave this body right now. Spirit of infirmity blocking this healing, come out. Spirit of infirmity blocking that healing. Damon, come out of there. Damon, you come out. You come out. Stop blocking his ministry. Stop blocking his joy. Stop it in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Feel more alive. Stay. Come out. Stay. Doubt and unbelief. Go on. Come on out. Come on out. Get out of that body right now. Come on there quickly. You filthy blocking spirit, putting doubt and unbelief in his brain, tempting him to go back to his old ugly life. How dare you do that? How dare you do that? How dare you do that? How'd you do over there? Now, before you leave, go get one of my cards, will you? And give me a call. I want to yeah. see you in a private session. Okay, I'm in Prescott Valley. Don't yeah. have to bring me down here. Yeah, you come down. I have a lot of people come down from up there. Will you come, can I come and talk to you? Yeah, you come down and see me. Get go to one of my cards and call me, and then come down here. All right, I'll set, you. schedule for the appointment. Thank you. All right. Did, did he come out of there? Who? I don't know. The husband. That's what. What were you feeling over there? I felt real sick. Yeah, that, that, that was him. That was the demon. Yeah, that was my dad. Is that gone? Your dad? Yeah. Is he out? I don't know. No. Well, how's your rest of your body feel? Worse or better? I feel. <laughs> my foot feels better. But that I feel foot? This. What about the rest of you? I feel like. A peace? Okay, that's the Holy Ghost. Yes. We'll work on the rest of them when you come down, okay? Yes. Go in the bookstore and ask Lori to give you one of my cards. Okay, bye bye. To cast out devils and demons. To cast out devils. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong with her? She's got a lot out. She's got a lot out. She still has a lot in there. She's got a lot of bitterness. Because her mom is bitterness to who? Her mom, dad, had a gentle spirit. Oh, now, that's uh, what I had. Let's skip that for a minute. Now, uh, your mother abused you? Grandmother's husband molested her. My, okay, my grandmother and my mother would take me to uh, see mediums all the time. They did the reach board. Yeah, she beats her stuff up. Grandmother and mother. Yeah. Now, listen, did you say any bad things about your mother when you were young? Yes, I did. And I asked did, God. Did you used to hate her? No, I don't hate her. I no, you used to. I used to, but I asked Okay, God now, to now hold on a minute. Uh, now, that causes a curse to fall on the kid. And then once that curse falls on you, then the other spirits get in after that. Okay? So go back right now, real quickly, to mother. What was her mother's name? Marie. Marie, go back there right now. Father God, we command Marie and her evil spirits to come out of this body right now because we forget. There, there it comes. Here it comes. Keep coughing. There it comes. Go. Come out. Come on out. That's her right there. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep coughing. Come out. Add a girl. Come out. Oh, oh, brother. I came to see you. I told Kevin I was going to see you. How are you? Good. Love you. Sounded like Rudolph. Thank you. Hey, what's going on here? What's going on here? What you need, huh? Angel. Your name's Angel. What's wrong with you? What's what's hurting you? I can't battle demons anymore. They don't listen to me anymore. Okay, now don't listen now. Let's go back into your childhood and tell me what happened. Who hurt you? Were you bullied? Yeah.